all carpet bagger here coming to you live from the north more specifically we are in rochester new york and uh, came up here about a week ago been staying with jen for the past week um we came up back up from florida after uh going on a little vacation with uh with my daughter and uh tomorrow I'll actually have to start heading back down to North Carolina. I'm gonna take a few days to get there, but uh, I have to head back down to uh, my hometown in North Carolina. Um, I actually have to uh, sign, I, I forget all these like these, these, these adult words, but I have to, <laughs> we were doing a closing on my house um, previously, the house belonged to me and my ex-wife, Christy, and I have uh, made an arrangement with her, a financial arrangement, where I will be becoming the sole owner of, uh, of the house. So we have to go meet at a law office and uh, both sign the agreement that will place the house in my name, and I will become the sole owner of my property, which is, wow, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's exciting because um, I have been on the road for uh, about a year and a half, and uh, it'll be exciting to get uh, get moved back in, get more of a permanent residence uh, put in place. I, um, I I will not be moving directly back in. It will be a few months. It'll be um, be at the uh, the end of the summer. Part of the arrangement we came up with is uh, that, that uh, my ex, she can stay in the house uh, with my daughter while my daughter, uh, until my daughter goes off to college, which she'll be going off to college at the end of the summer. And then Christy will be moving out and I will be moving back in. Another thing I wanted to uh, announce as it pertains to this channel, as of yesterday, I um, am officially a Walt Disney World annual pass holder. The uh, the annual passes have been uh, they have not been selling them since the pandemic. Only only selling them to Florida residents and allowing people that already had them to renew them. But this is the first time they reopened annual passes to the general public. I um, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I have wanted to be uh, an annual pass holder. I love the idea of being able to just stop by, stop by uh, Disney World whenever, whenever I wanted. Um, of course, you know, I, I do usually go to Disney a few times uh, a year, and um, I went back and forth. Like, do I need this? Do I need this for my channel? Do I need this to visit Disney? And and the answer was maybe, maybe not. Um, I think I have to use it eight times. I think that was the math. Eight times to uh, to make it worth my while. Um, but at the same time, it does give you a little more freedom to to visit the parks. You know, now when I buy a tip park ticket, I you know buy it uh, buy that expensive one day ticket, which can be anywhere from, I think 109 to like 189, depending on the day. And then, um, then, uh, you know, you want to get there early. So you get your money's worth. I think this, this, this gives me a little more relaxation in that I can stop by the park with a pass. I can park, I can park in the parking lot for free go into the park, uh, stop by whenever, just whenever, whenever I feel like it, whenever I'm in the Florida, in the Florida area. And of course I don't live in Florida. I travel all over the country, but uh, I'm in Florida a couple times a year. I mean, I did definitely go down to Florida a couple times a year. So I'm hoping to get, get some use out of, of this pass and don't worry, you know, I'm not going to become a, uh, a, a Disney vlogger <laughs> per se. Um, you know, the focus on this channel has, and, uh, always will be the whole, United States experience, you know, and maybe some some overseas experiences at some point. But um, you know, I do love to cover amusement parks. That's part of what I cover here on the channel, and um, I, I I will probably be visiting Disney a little bit more. So uh, yeah, I, you know, I know some people like Disney content. Some people, some people may feel that you know, there's enough people down there. There's enough people making vlogs in Disney. 
and um, you know I will you know do my experiences but I you know I, I, I feel like you know I have a little bit of a different perspective on Disney than a lot of people and I think it's okay to do it here and there um, you know, I'm not, again, not planning on moving to Florida, not planning on making this a Disney channel, but I am planning on being able to swing by and stop by at Disney uh, whenever uh, whenever I'm in the area. And they, uh, when you have the pass, you don't need a reservation if you go after two. I like going in the evenings anyway, so I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited to uh, to get the get, get some mileage out of my Disney pass. I've kind of been the pass collector recently, so as, as of now, I have a... Uh, a pass that will get me into every Cedar Fair Park, a pass that will get me into every Six Flags Park, a uh, pass for Universal Studios Hollywood, a, a pass for uh, SeaWorld and Busch Gardens, all the SeaWorld and Busch Gardens parks, and now, and now we have a pass to Walt Disney World. I, I would have thought about buying a pass that would get me into Disney World and Disneyland, but they didn't offer anything on the website that uh, that got you into both coasts, so that really wasn't an option. But anyways, just wanted to let you guys know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I missed the best part is that I spent six hours. I didn't sit by my phone for six hours. I, uh, you know, you had to go into a queue in order to buy the annual pass. And, uh, and... So I, I logged on my phone, and I'm sitting there with my phone open, and Jen is like pleading with me, please, just put your phone away. Don't you don't have to look at it. So I, you know, I would I would check my phone here and there to see where I was in the queue, and it took about six hours to get in the queue, which is just funny to me. Like the idea that um, I'm waiting six hours to pay them money and buy something from them. It, it's how it's just how it works. You know, you normally don't wait in line long lines at Disney. You wait in long lines to buy tickets. So yeah, after six hours of waiting in queue, I finally, uh, finally was able to get, uh, the, uh, the annual pass. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure it was going to be sold out or not by then, because I didn't, I didn't get up at like 6 a.m. or anything crazy like that. I just, when I got up in the morning, I, I checked it and got in the queue. But anyways, today we're going to do something here in Rochester before we have to leave, and there's something that I've been uh, wanting to check out. And this is what I wanted to check out today. This is called Artisan Works. I'm just looking for interesting things in the Rochester area to check out. And uh, stumbled upon this. It looked pretty interesting from what I saw as a collection of uh, strange and unusual artwork. And uh, notice here on the mural, they actually have uh, different figures here. Some of them have uh, name tags here. I know some of these are uh, local, famous local icons like George Eastman the creator of the uh, Kodak Company. We had Frederick Douglass there. Philip Seymour Hoffman, the actor, was uh, from the Rochester area. And then uh, Susan B. Anthony here at the end. But let's, uh, let's see where we go to enter Artisan Works. Okay, so the entrance is over this way. The old-timey car here. And a dangling pirate. Some wonderful fiberglass statues out here. The big red elephant. The big red uh, gorilla there. And a big red turtle. And don't forget about the big golden lion. Oh, I do like this real horse, seahorse mashup. Okay, it says enter here. Well, look at this pointy, pointy uh, doorknob here. All right, so you've seen here a very large space, lots of interesting things in here. There should be some sort of, some sort of contraption or turning gears here in the middle. Not sure what that's doing. Take a closer look at this, uh, contraption here. You can actually see it's a form of a clock. So the pendulum hanging down there. And uh, I didn't catch it, but it, the bell did ding at one point and it, and it, and it scared me. <laughs> so there's the big rock hanging over on the, the side there. Up in the rafters here, you can see a family 
operating a fruits and vegetable stand. This corner back here is very interesting. We got the uh, Tin Woodsman there from uh, the Wizard of Oz. And then we've got some jungle animals here. We've got the, uh, the lion, vicious looking lion there, as well as a elephant head. Oh, back there you can see some marlin there on the walls. And there are some other animals back there. I see a hippo, a uh, maybe a wildebeest back there, a rhinoceros, and then it looks like there's a shark in the back of this car. This car here is apparently a 1921 Ario Speedwagon, but watch out because there is a baboon lurking on the other side of this car. You can see this horse here pulling a wagon. The wagon completely full of dolls here. It's a painting of an elephant. I've got these masks up here and a woman and a gorilla in an embrace. Some tax, more taxidermy there up in the rafters. And uh, I don't know, this almost looks like a, a slaughtered pig cut into pieces, all connected by chains. We'll head down this hallway here. And uh, okay. Oh, all right. It's like a little, almost like a little diner set up in here. You can see uh, an older gentleman there with uh, with a child, possibly. Maybe it's maybe it's grandson. Maybe it's just a friendly uh, friendly stranger. So we peek back in here. I don't know what this area is. Maybe a shoe store. You see the different shoes there. There's maybe the shoe store owner. And I do really like uh, that clock back there. Rose plastic covers. The horse here next to the ticket booth. You see this man uh, selling tickets. Looks like they are tickets to the opera. Opera ticket, only five cents. This room in here looks like it's set up like a firehouse. You can see the antique fire truck in here. Here's a uh, punching bag for the firemen to practice on. And I'll even have a fireman's pole here. So you can peek up through the pole. There's some, actually some artwork up there on the ceiling. We do have these tables set up through the exhibit. I do think they rent this out as a, uh, a place to have events. They do wedding receptions here. A little pig, maybe a carousel pig there. Yeah, there's all these different individual pieces of art mixed in. This is a dedicated to 20th century American laborers. If you look up here to see the different workers and craftsmen to the top of the tower there. It's a Dalmatian poking out of the fire truck and this big uh, bearskin rug hanging off the side. <laughs> Looks like we can actually take this staircase up, this winding staircase up to the next level. I guess this would be the uh, place where the firemen would hang out in between fires. We've got a foosball table, a pool table over here. And I guess these are beds that the firemen would sleep in. Of course, it looks like they are currently full of baby dolls. Now this bed's covered in uh, in Beanie Babies. And yeah, just a huge amount of baby dolls. There's a couch and lamps, look kind of like a face there. And then there is this, whatever this 
creation is. It's got a wheel there, almost like a unicycle. That is a very interesting creature. It's some sort of clock here. You can hear all the gears turning. Actually look and see the gears turning in there. And there's a carousel horse. Looks like that's a uh, it's a brass ring there that you can uh, grab while on the carousel. And then just a cage full of Barbies there. Oh, I almost didn't see this. There's like strange and unusual things lurking around almost every corner here. I I'm starting to I'm starting to like this place. <laughs> Look at that. Go down the hallway here. It says, inside the mine of Lescrims, the little shop of horrors. It's a bloody tooth there on the sign. Be heading into some sort of dentist's office here. This would be the waiting room of the dentist's office. doll there. This, this will be the check-in desk for the dentist's office. You see some dental information cards there. Baby teeth, lasting importance. Got a little beaver there on uh, on the brochure. Tooth decay won't wait. You can see an elephant there with a with a rotten tusk. I take a peek here into the actual <laughs> dentist's office. You can see all that terrifying dental equipment, I guess, being operated over there by the clown. And, uh, yeah, look at those giant, giant teeth there eating an ice cream code. Wow, that is, that is pretty cool. You see, back of the, uh, dentist's office, there's actually a murder scene. It says that the artist Les Crims uh, created the photos of, of fake murder scenes with his uh, friends and family. They would make uh, gory murder scenes and photograph them, and each one would be numbered, but the way they would number them, as in each picture, there would be a stack of pancakes, and the number of pancakes would denote which number it was in the series. You can see the stack of pancakes there, on the toilet above the murdered corpse. This art here is created by a man named Bill Stewart. Some really cool stuff there. I like this creature here covered in plants. A lot of uh, interesting things here. There's a can baby. A lot of baby dolls here at uh, Artisan Works. And uh, this is interesting down here. This little house is labeled. It says guardhouse. It says birds three. It's a chimney right there. Then all these figures out front are uh, numbered. You have Santa Claus and some sheep, some soldiers there. Love this old organ. I love the way this type of organs look. Just the design, all the colorful keys, the shape. I think they're really beautiful. So many different things hanging from the ceiling. The uh, license plate ball there. The uh, angel with the sword. This is a piece by Ross Ryder. It is a soda fountain dispenser. You can see the antique soda fountain dispensers there. And then the large carved version right there. Also a really interesting carving of an electrical outlet. I really, really think that's interesting there. Look how detailed it is, the little screws on the side. And there's the actual prongs that would go into the outlet. It's a massive pencil sharpener too. I don't know where you would find a pencil large enough to uh, insert in there to sharpen. Looks like there's like dangling skeletons made of driftwood. And then a big old, big old buffalo head. This here is super amazing. It's 
this uh, almost like a mermaid, but with a bomb instead of a fish tail, like a bomb tail. And just look at that horrifying deep sea fish mouth on that creature there. Underneath it, you see a, a globe wearing a gas mask. Yes, yeah, so that's really cool. I really love this. And a really cool tree man right here. Like an old tree spirit. Oh, look at his, look at his eyes there. And I love how his beard is made out of old uh, dried twigs. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive tree man. Another large sculpture in here of an old timey camera, similar to the other sculptures we saw. Yeah, you can see the uh, camera, the inspiration camera there, and the full-sized massive camera sculpture, or carving, if you will, it's made out of wood. And uh, who's, who's lurking back in here behind the uh, elevator cage? Who are uh, these folks back in here? Oh yeah, it's like a, I don't know if that's like a real elevator, but you can see it's uh, got the dial there and the door and the cage. All these cameras are fitting. We are in uh, Rochester, home of the Kodak Company. Fish-like dolphin carving here. If you look down here, you can actually see some living goldfish. There's some fancy goldfish there. I love the ones with the, the spongy, spongy heads. I used to know what that was called, but I'm, I'm not, not able to pull the name up out of my brain right now. And uh, yeah, look at that shark there. Yeah, really enjoying these Ross Ryder sculptures. See the little toothbrush in the holder there, and then the big wooden toothbrush in the holder with the toothpaste. A lot of really amazing photography in here. See back here it says F-stop, the dark room. An old, old style dark room where you would, where you would uh, develop your photos. I actually had a chance to do this in college. I took a black and white photography class and it is really challenging but really rewarding this whole process of taking pictures. Of course now taking pictures so easy with, 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 a, with a good a good camera you can take amazing pictures back back in the day it was a real real art form it was real rewarding we were watching the pictures come to life in the chemicals yeah back in the day you know photography a real real art form that required an amazing amount of skill and understanding of chemistry you can see the taxidermy up here actually appears in some of these photos you can see the uh the head there and look at that, a hippo, it's like a hippo tied to an office chair. Here's set up like a Photoshop. You can see inside, oh yeah, the Kodak. All the old photo equipment, all the chemicals, all the uh, film. Yeah, it really brings back uh, memories. I actually did start, you know, when I started taking pictures, I did it on film. So yeah, brings back a lot of, a lot of positive memories a tap room in here oh okay set up like a bar and look at this shuffleboard table my uh grandmother has a shuffleboard table like this in her basement it was actually uh originally was in a bar and then her and my grandfather purchased it and uh, moved it to uh to her home and then down here we see a chess match between a farmer and a uh, a horse oh the horse looks a little a little concerned I don't know I, I I'm not that good at chess does anyone know who's winning here the uh, farmer or the horse look up in here and see all the different beer signs the neon beer signs up there on the wall and the actual bar area over here We've got some old beer clocks. Some uh, political artwork here. You see the homeless people there sleeping in uh, tents and refrigerator boxes. Out here in front of Trump Tower and Fox News where the 
buildings are actually made of money. Carving of a Swiss army knife. I actually had a Swiss army knife when I was a kid. And I remember I cut myself real bad playing around with it, just like they, uh, just like they told me not to. Big uh, doorknob there. And then what is this? We got some, some marionettes up here. It says the Federal Theater Project. So we see, uh, oh, okay. I guess this is a scene, is this, uh, look at the scene here. I'm thinking this is Rip Van Winkle there, who uh, fell asleep and then uh, woke up. What did he, what did he sleep for, uh, for a very long time? I forget, how long, how long did Rip Van Winkle sleep? If you know that, leave a comment in the comments section. So some other puppets down here. Looks like they're meeting at a tavern there. It's a big wooden lighter. <laughs> and uh, it's some more cameras here. A lot of celebration of the photography. Of course, uh, you know, it fits with the, th with the city. It's like a picture of the Kodak building, which is still here in uh, Rochester. Crazy to think that machines like this are now obsolete or now something that is no longer relevant where you could go into a store, you could scan your pictures and uh, get them reprinted. It was, a, it was a, it was a, it was a hassle, but I, uh, I remember uh, going into stores and using machines like this. Okay. Like this, this place is amazing. Like it's like, this is sort of like a, uh, a bordering on like a house of the rock type collection. You know, it's all these different artists, but the way they're integrated is is amazing. It really creates creates like an amazing immersive art environment here. You just have this <laughs> have this big stuffed giraffe here. And uh yes yeah, old car there. See this glowing in the back trunk. There's a wooden car. I just gotta love the I love all the wooden carvings we've seen walking through here. In the back, you've got two, two lions locked in a battle to the death. Oh look, another vicious lion popping out of a wall up there. And uh, if that's not enough, and a big elephant just hovering over everything. These little creatures in the back of the truck here, I've actually seen them in a couple, several locations here in, uh, in Artisan Works. Are, uh, I think they're calling them brownies. Big old, big old bear right there. Oh, you can see a hippo, hippo back there uh, as well. Of course, I'm always a big taxidermy fan, so just love all of the like hidden taxidermy. Entering the juke joint here. <laughs> and more taxidermy, of course. And then who's, uh, okay, we got a guy up there eating a sandwich. I wonder what kind of sandwich that is. Up here you can see a crocodile eating a poor innocent zebra. And there's a, another giraffe, some more, some more large carvings of everyday objects. What do we got back here? <laughs> this uh, cougar leaping at us. We've got a bear trying to uh, catch some salmon as they jump uh, upstream. There's a turkey back there in the corner and uh, a couple doing a seductive dance. This is Ride Big Bronco. You're gonna ride this big Bronco here for only 10 cents. Whatever that is, that is is terrifying. Look at look at that face there. This is a Chevy Corvair, which is a some sort of bobcat on the roof. I, I know what a Corvair is only because one time when I went into an abandoned house, there was a Corvair parked in the garage. But uh, this plaque here was explaining the Corvair was actually considered one of the most dangerous cars ever made because the gas tank was built in the front. They said the Engines in the trunk, the gas tanks in the front, right? This is right by the uh, driver's feet, so I guess maybe caused some uh, unwanted explosions. And next to the Corvair, we have a 
delightful mermaid here sitting in uh, this canoe. It's a rhinoceros there. And we see more of these brownies. Yeah, they're like little elves and they, they're scattered about uh, the museum here. Here at the retro room, we have this old love tester. It says, uh, I'm old and fragile. Please use only real quarters. Well, they're in luck because I got a real quarter right here. Oh, okay. I'll pull that back out. Then, uh, there we go. Let's see where my, uh, where my love is. Come on, come on, hot stuff. Well, 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 I'm wild, so I have to settle, uh, settle for wild. See the old jukebox there, and uh, one of those machines that weighs you and then tells you your horoscope. And an old pinball machine, Diamond Jack. This one takes real quarters as well. Oh, there we go. The ball. Oh, here comes the ball. Here comes the ball. Oh, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Got it. Oh, dang it. Frankie's there. Apparently this is a Frank Lloyd Wright inspired room in here. I've never been to any of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's homes, never toured any of the Frank Lloyd Wright properties, but this is inspired by his work. You can see the library up there on the second floor. This, uh, this black bear this black bear here it looks like uh, looks like Adam Driver. So wow, Artisan Works. What a hidden gem here in Rochester. I really didn't know what to expect coming here today, but I was really blown away by just the vastness of the collection, all at how it was organized. Like I said, it was almost the way things were all crammed together. I kind of love that style. It almost reminded me a little bit, just a little bit of the of House on, uh, on the Rock, the way that the collections were just interweaved amongst each other. Yeah, I and again, <laughs> just a, I just feel like I need to point this out. I think this does rival Artisan Works. It's, it's kind of a plain name, admittedly. It kind of reminds me of the City Museum, as in names that uh, maybe no, don't ev truly evoke how uh, wonderful what you're going to see uh, truly is. So yeah, I would definitely. This is I have not heard a whole lot about this publicized, at least in, in at least in the circles that I. Uh, that I pay attention to. So this, yeah, definitely, if you're in Rochester, come check this out. This is a pretty amazing collection. Over here, it's a really cool sign. It's like a, a, I guess a paint gun. I'm not sure, it says Rico's. I'm not sure what type of business this is. I guess that's the uh, sort of gun you would use to to paint things, I, I, I think. Across the street here, have some very interesting benches. You can see, uh, this one has a mustache. This one's making a kissy face. And then according to these little plaques, they do have names. This is Curly with the mustache and then Smooches here giving the kiss. Now look at all these different expressions here on uh, these benches. Oh, this one here, this is a vampire. This one's called Fangtastic. Also a uh, mouth there with uh, some braces.
Also another uh, fiberglass elephant over here as well. So thank you for joining me today. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be headed back to North Carolina tomorrow. It seems like I just got back here to Rochester, but uh, that is the life here on the Long Lonesome Road. Never in one place for all that long. So hopefully tomorrow I will be uh, joining you from someplace along that Long Lonesome Road. Hopefully you can uh, find something interesting tomorrow as we uh, travel to uh, towards back towards North Carolina. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Uh, I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random things. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Some brand new pins will be available hopefully soon. And uh, also doing cameos. Been doing cameos, been doing some special birthday messages, special anniversary messages, and some messages just for fun. If you're interested in receiving a special message from me or sending a special message from me to someone else, uh, check that out in the description of this video. And of course, all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.